small city of Bangor nestles unobtrusively in the foothills of Snowdonia at the mouth of the Menai Straits. This stretch of water between the Isle of Anglesey and the North Wales mainland is crossed by two bridges. The main railway line to the Irish port of Holyhead crosses the Britannia Bridge, whilst Telford's famous suspension bridge was built to accommodate the main road from London to Holyhead. Bangor became a busy trading town, largely as a result of the Irish port traffic, and now it's the busy commercial hub of the county of Gwynedd. But not so long ago, Bangor's own port, Port Penryn, was a hive of activity, when the slate in the nearby mountains of Snowdonia was a sought-after commodity. From here, ships used to set sail laden with slates, bound for all corners of the globe. But nowadays, the port is used mainly by local fishermen and pleasure craft. The slate industry has gone into decline, and the home of the old quarry owners, Penryn Castle, is now in the hands of the National Trust. At the beginning of the century, there was a long and bitter strike in the quarry in protest at the unfair way that the quarrymen were being treated by the then owner of the castle. It lasted three years, and hundreds of families sought a living elsewhere. The cathedral at Bangor squats in a hollow like so many Welsh cathedrals. This was probably to avoid it being seen by the plundering Vikings, but it is an ancient ecclesiastical establishment, and more of that later. Let's now, though, go inside the cathedral and join the congregation as they sing at the name of Jesus. And in this, the most Welsh-speaking part of North Wales, what could be more appropriate than singing alternate verses in Welsh? people of Bangor in good voice there, accompanied by the University College Brass Ensemble. Well, now we're going to sing a Welsh hymn tune, Sanctus, written by E. Salau, who lived all his life here in Bangor. And in fact, it's one of many hymn tunes that were composed in this area.
Martin Boyce is senior instructor at the indefatigable nautical school just outside Bangor. The school is trying to take a, a lad at 13 to 16 years old and to put him through his basic school education that he would get in any, any other school and then to add on top of that the outdoor education and character building that we can give in a uniformed environment. The whole organisation is run on a semi-service uh, routine but we take them out uh, into the hills, the mountains, onto the water and try and boost their confidence by putting them into a situation where they're being stretched probably a little further than they've been done in their previous life. What dimension do you think does it give a boy to, to wrestle with the elements? It gives him a chance on his own to, to conquer something. He's obviously very well guided and very well prepared uh, before he actually does it, but it's up to him to actually go and do it. And he can succeed and see that he is the one who has actually done the succeeding. And what do you get out of their successes and, and perhaps their failures? There's a, a tremendous job satisfaction in seeing a lad who said to you yesterday, I couldn't do that, and yet today says, I enjoyed doing that. I think when a lad wakes up and he looks out over the mountains and over the straits, it's got to uh, inspire his heart to want to get up and do something constructive today, because a lot of them come from these urban areas where uh, it's all built up. It's a very dreary existence but I'm sure that most of them get a tremendous amount of inspiration from what they see. And hopefully we can try in a Christian organization to try and help them to say thank you. And here, living in this environment, I find it's very easy to encourage other people to make the full use of uh, this environment that's been given to us. And this really, I think, is summed up in the hymn that I've chosen, I Worship the King, where here we are, we've been provided with these things and we should say thank you for them and make the most of it. Twenty-one years ago, Maureen Williams gave birth to Darren, who is blind as well as being mentally and physically handicapped, and spends all his life in his cot. Maureen and her husband, Yori, have nursed him ever since. Well, he makes a great impact. We have quite a lot of visitors here. People um, who usually come for the first time. Uh, they come here with all kinds of ailments, moans and groans and come what may, that after a short while, in Darren's presence, they go away from here much different people. This is something that he radiates and I think it's God's love. He has made God very much alive in our lives. Um, well, as before, I used to have my doubts sometimes. I'm, I'm a cradle Catholic, but I used to have my doubts of the existence of God, but Darren has really confirmed 
that God is alive and is with us. In what way? Well, um, you know, you look at Darren and he's, you know, he's not able to do anything for himself. But for 21 years, God has taken care of him through ordinary people, simple, inadequate people. The power of God has worked through us to keep Darren alive. And I see Darren as, as the gospel being lived out in his fullest. But it can't have been easy. Well, it hasn't been very difficult. We accepted Darren and we loved Darren. And I think if you take the first step in faith, God will take care of the rest. And what may seem to you to be very difficult, it's just, you know, it's just our life, isn't it? We just do what we have to do. You can spend your life asking why and, and you know, becoming a martyr and feeling sorry for yourself, but you don't get anything done, do you? So I think it's best, you know, to look at Darren and look at him with joy and gratitude and, you know, see the very good things that come out of it. What has Darren given you? Oh, profound faith. A, a true belief in God and his love for me. And that, you know, Christ is alive for me because of Darren. The one emotion that we haven't talked about, really, is, is that of anger. Have you ever felt angry about all this? I have discovered that anger is such a pointless and it's a self-destroying um, emotion, I think. And I have found that when I get angry, I have sort of taken a step backwards, not a step forward. Now, the priest comes and administers the sacrament to Darren, along with you. What does that mean to you, and what do you believe it means to Darren? Well, you know, it's hard to understand what things mean to Darren. So I can only relate through my feelings. And to me, it means that Darren shares with us the body and blood of Christ. So he is part of the family of Our Ladies in Bangor. And that means a great deal to me. You know, that Darren is as important to the community as the most important person believes he or she is. Can you tell me about the hymn that you've chosen? I have chosen a hymn by Damien Lundy. It's called The Song of the Young Prophet, but it is known as The Word of My Lord Deep Within My Being. And I chose it because I truly believe that unless we are steeped with the Word of God, that the Word of God is deep within us, I don't think we can do anything in this world. I don't think we can witness to God's love for us.
In our congregation in the cathedral, there are many nurses from Isbethi Gwynedd, the local hospital for a large rural area. Two and a half thousand people work here, so the hospital is one of the main employers in an area where no major industry remains and where unemployment and depopulation is a continuing problem. Ronald Keating used to be on the staff of Bangor Cathedral and now is one of the hospital chaplains. As a chaplain in the hospital, it's sometimes difficult to see the relationship between what you might do formally in the religious setting of a chapel and the more ordinary ministry, which goes on far more regularly on the ward itself. And the offering of the Eucharist and its extension into the ward is one of the most privileged parts of a hospital chaplain's ministry. In bringing the word of God to people, you have to be with them at various stages of their lives, where they are. Alan Jones is no stranger to Bangor Cathedral. When he started his singing career, he was a member of the choir. I missed going a lot because, well, it was we, we were like one big happy family there. We were really friendly together, and I was singing on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, so it was a large part of my life. And having to stop so suddenly, it was quite sad to start with. But I was very, very busy at that time. And what about singing? Do you actually do any singing now? Um, I do a bit of singing around the house and the bath and with Sting and people like that, but no, I, I don't sing professionally at all now, no. Do you not miss that? Oh, yes, I miss it a lot. But you're going back to it once the voice settles? If the voice settles, yes. I'd love to sing. Mm -hmm. In what sort of way? Um, well, I'd like to do everything, really, but some people say that's not possible. I'd like to do opera, but before that I'd like to do a couple of pop songs. How do your school friends relate to you? When I was in the cathedral, um, I used to get teased quite a lot, especially by the younger ones. But now, now my, the ones my own age, the, my friends are great. They treat me normally, but the younger children still go around school singing, walking in the air and things like that. So, but I don't mind. It shows that they've bought the album. <laughs> There was a great atmosphere in the cathedral, arriving very early on Sunday mornings and singing religious music in the cathedral, which I really enjoyed. I was the soloist as well, so I always had the good parts. And the words were so comforting, calm, and I really enjoyed singing.
otherwise I don't think I'd get the same enjoyment out of singing. Like in my favourite hymn, Dear Lord and Father of Mankind, I try to convey the calmness of the hymn because the words are really, really beautiful. James Nicholas is a school's inspector, but he's also a well-known Welsh language poet and used to be Archdruid of Wales. The Archdruid is the president of the Gorsedd of Bards, which is a society of poets and writers and people from various walks of life in Wales who are dedicated to the language, to the culture and to peace. And it was during 1981-1983 that I presided over the proceedings of the Gorsedd. Uh, in other words, when a poet was being chaired or being crowned at the Nationalist Edward, it is the Archdruid who does that work. A great deal of the poetry that I have written uh, has been on the theme of love and uh, dedicated to my wife. Uh, but much of it has been expressed in terms of biblical or Christian symbolism. The particular poem that is being sung here tonight is a poem that uh, looks on life as a sacrament, and the sacramental element is extremely strong. The central symbol is that of the Last Supper. It expresses the ultimate suffering which Christ suffered on behalf of mankind. And it sees this in some secular terms, in nature and in the passing of the summer into the autumn, the autumn into winter, and the resurrection of life. 
which is the ultimate faith of every Christian in the coming of spring and in the new life which is born through the giving of the bread and the wine. And indeed these symbols of the bread and the wine are really turned into spiritual symbols. They are the life-giving forces of the soul in effect and ultimately lead to the life which is given and which is expressed in the resurrection. In other words, the continual renewal of life which we all experience and which is eventually a joyful and a victorious expression of uh, the Christian faith. Ivor Rees has been Dean of Bangor Cathedral for 11 years. Well, Bangor Cathedral was founded in 525 by St. Daniel, one of the great Celtic saints. That's 70 years before Canterbury. And we were very proud of a heritage which goes back almost 15 centuries, which is why we want to preserve our cathedral into the next century, and hopefully that we shall get a good response to our present appeal. There is much in it to commend it, one can think of the improvements which were done by Gilbert Scott's re restoration just over a hundred years ago in the Reredos and the sanctuary. One thinks of the beautiful and moving Most in Christ from the early 16th century, which shows our Lord's very real suffering. We thank God for St. Daniel and for the founding of the church in this place. And we pray that God's grace may further our worship and our witness to his name. Amen. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection we commit you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace this night and always.